1991, uh, an engineering, 1990 or 1991, it was an engineering student who suggested that I go to see President Weefall. And I already had a relationship with him, uh, you know, a little bit and known, who, uh, known about him. And uh, we met uh, at his office in Anderson Hall with him and uh, Bob Krauss. And we brought the dean of engineering in and they thought it was a great idea to help design a better chair to compete in the games in Barcelona. So uh, they made it a whole class project for the engineering students at Kansas State. And the professors and everybody got involved, including the Dean of Engineering. And during that time, uh, that's when uh, they uh, wanted me to meet uh, Coach Snyder. He was fairly new yet at that time, and they said uh, all the stuff I was saying, they said, you sound a lot like Coach Snyder. And they said, we want you guys, think you guys need to meet. So the next thing I knew, they called up and he was over there and we were talking. And then he wanted me to speak to the football team. So I said, sure. And, uh, and that's what I did. And, uh, and then he wanted to know if I'd keep coming back. And I said, well, yeah, I'd like to do that. I like uh, speaking to kids and, and uh, helping them make the best out of their life. After I'd done the first speech, he asked me to come back later in the season, and uh, he didn't say anything about talking to the team. He just said uh, he wanted to show me something. Well, he led me around the, the corridor, uh, which was different when I'd been there last, and uh, and he read, led me around the back way, and this was before the... Oklahoma State game in 91, we had to win that to get a winning season. He said, uh, you guys all know who this is. I've talked about him. This is Kevin Saunders, uh, and uh, he become the world's greatest wheelchair athlete. And he, uh, you know, and I didn't know it, but you'd have to train harder to be a great athlete in a wheelchair than you do to be a great athlete on your feet. So I was in front of the whole team, and he said, you all know who this is. We've I've talked to you about him and his work ethic and everything that he does. And uh, he's going to tell you how to go out there and beat this team today. And so I had about five seconds to get prepared for that speech. That's uh, That was uh, what you call uh, under the gun. <laughs> I did it from 91 to 2005. He asked me last year if I'd be willing to come back with him uh, last year for uh, the, the whole entire time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, sure, Coach, that'd be a great honor. And uh, I really like the, the young kids to work with them and to, you know, not have to have them go through something terrible to learn that you want to put your very, very best effort forth every time. You know, and and that's what makes a champion. That's how you bring out the champion within. The way I used to talk about it when I was uh, at the top in the world as a wheelchair athlete is nobody wants to sacrifice as much as I am, I'm willing to to be the best in the world. As they took all the champions, uh, uh, somebody put this all information all together, and because of my service on the fitness council, you get to find out a lot of it. You know, unusual facts, but interesting facts, nevertheless, that the, they took the average height and weight of all the world's greatest champions, and they found out, you know, the average champion is five foot 10, 170 pounds. But what I said, if you cut that champion open, and I used Tyler Lockett as an example, and the way he played with such heart and such dedication. I said, you'll find inside a nine foot heart that's over 300 pounds in weight. And, uh, you know, that's got that drive, that determination, that courage, and that attitude that never gives up and the will to win with the heart of a champion. Oh, and if you learn how to be successful on the field and how to do all that work, it carries over into your personal life.